The xenomorph dorsal tubes are probably one of the most mysterious parts of the xenomorph biology. It is not widely known what exactly these tubes are used for. However, in this video, I will be diving into just that. The dorsal tubes, also known as protuberances or spines, exist on the exoskeleton to the back area of the xenomorph. They exist on almost every kind of xenomorph and, however, their biological and anatomical function is generally not explored in the wider alien universe. However, there is a brief explanation for their uses uh, across varying xenomorphs that could help us to understand their role in the creature's metabolic activities. In the book titled Alien Augmented Reality Survival Manual, it is explained that the xenomorphs lack lungs. This actually makes sense because of the fact that the xenomorphs appear to be able to breathe in almost any kind of environment, where it be oxygen rich, in the vacuum of space, or in toxic or poisonous atmospheres, etc. So in this way, traditional lungs don't make much sense. So instead, the xenomorph has a system that combines its acidic blood, its feeding habits, and its dorsal tubes in order to respire and feed its cells energy needs. The first step is obviously finding food, and it has been shown in various medias that the xenomorphs do in fact eat. I have even done a video uh, talking about the specific process of how this works. The xenomorph can eat just about anything and are not restricted to solely biological materials. As we see, they can take massive chunks of metal and feed on that. It is likely that the creature can consume just about anything to feed themselves. They are able to feed on metals, rocks and other inorganic materials through the use of first liquefying it by utilising small amounts of the acid blood from its mouth, then sucking it up into its internal body using the inner jaw. Now, once inside the xenomorph, the materials travel through its bloodstream to the dorsal tubes, and this is where their function becomes revealed. Because once at the dorsal tubes, the blood pools in the hollow inner pockets within the tubes. The blood pooling is supported by the fact that when a xenomorph has been shot or these tubes have been damaged, massive amounts of blood spew forth from the wound, in excess of that of other areas of the body. The tubes, as stated in the Alien Survival book, are actually a semi-permeable membrane, which means that they are able to move specific materials, such as respiratory gases and liquids, across their surface, that once allowed to move into the tubes, can react with the xenomorph's enzymes and the materials that they have digested into their bloodstream in order to release chemical energy that fuels the creature's metabolism. So in this way, the xenomorph does not need a lengthy and complicated digestive system, but needs simply to consume materials that are slowly broken down in the blood, and once broken down to a, to a suitable molecular size, and all pool in the dorsal tubes, the respiratory gases or liquids are moved across the semi-permeable membranes of their tubes on their exoskeleton in order to provide energy for their metabolism. Via the chemical reactions taking place, which also negates the need for an extensive respiratory system. This combination means that the xenomorph needs less organs and less structures to perform multiple complex metabolic activities, making the xenomorph once again the perfect organism with a streamlined biology that enables it to use very little amounts of energy whilst generating and storing large amounts of it. Which could explain why they need to eat very little and can stave off starvation for months, years and even possibly longer in hibernation. In the old expanded universe of Alien, there is a xenomorph type known as the Carrier, which I have done a previous video on. This creature can attach face huggers to its dorsal tubes and keep them alive almost indefinitely until they find a host. This makes sense because we already know that the dorsal tubes are a pooling ground for nutrients and blood that the xenomorph has digested. They could then transfer these nutrients to the face huggers to sustain them until they find a host 
to impregnate and then die. So this is my best explanation for the structure and the function of the xenomorph's dorsal tubes. Basically they allow the xenomorph to eat and breathe in a very efficient and very streamlined biological system that fits with the title of a perfect organism. So what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments section. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you did want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content as well as the monthly and alien day giveaways. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. This is Project Acheron, signing out.